Hey everybody, welcome back to Grandpa Story Hour. I am Jason and Wyatt's grandpa. Hey Jason. Hey Wyatt, I love you. Uh, we're doing, we're just reading stories. I'm doing this for my uh, school. I won't tell you what school because I don't represent the school. I just haven't had free time today. So I'm doing it at the school. Starting a little series of books. This is uh, Land of the Pilgrim's Pride. So I'm looking forward to it. Let's see what it's about. It says to all the brave men and women who came before us and built the America we love. Okay, Jason and Wyatt and all boys and girls, I hope you like it. So Ellis, the elephant, was a big history fan, excited to learn how our nation began. Ellis packed up his trunk and hit Liberty's Trail. First stop, Williamsburg, to begin our great tale. It's a pretty book, look at that. Here he was delighted to see at last, life as it was three centuries past. Ellis spotted a flag with just 13 stars, instead of all 50, as we see on ours. Ellis was confused. He just had to confess. Why 13 stars? No more and no less. They're for the 13 colonies, said his guide in a hat. As we ride along, I'll tell you about that. Awesome. Our nation's story begins in Virginia, Jamestown, where fortune seekers from England came to settle down. But soon in the New World, the colonists came, became aware that many Native people were already living there. Between the settlers and Indians, conflict quickly arose. Captain John Smith was soon captured by his foes, but his young friend Pocahontas courageously stepped in, saving the Englishman so peace could begin. It's a nice looking book, PJ and Jason, boys and girls. PJ and Jason, Jason and Wyatt, love it. Ellis then learned what the King of England did say. You may not worship together freely in your own way. So the brave pilgrims set sail across the stormy sea. They landed in Plymouth, Massachusetts and formed a colony. The pilgrims agreed that their rules would be fair and just. With no king, food, or shelter, they had only God to trust. They wrote the Mayflower Compact for their new colony and planted the very first seeds of democracy. It's a nice looking book. Jason Wyatt, boys and girls. The pilgrims weren't the only ones from a place far away. Catholics came from England to live on the Chesapeake Bay. In Maryland, the colonists gathered to freely practice their faith, certain at last they could worship and could be safe. The North in New York, Dutch colonists resided. Peter Minuit bought Manhattan, land that the Indians provided. Just 60 Dutch coins for the island, all agreed, was a very fair rate and they would soon come to find it was prime real estate. Ellis learned that in America, settlers used what they could find having just arrived from the old world. They left everything behind. In New Jersey, cranberries were grown for food, medicine, and dye. The colonists were resourceful and made the most of a bountiful supply. There's Ellis the elephant. You can hear boys and girls going through the hallway now. In Connecticut, farmers worked hard to make sure their crops would grow. Families toiled together through rain, wind, and snow. Many farmers had cows that provided milk, butter, and cheese. And Ellis thought it would be great fun to take care of one of these. In New Hampshire, the settlers had a very good rule. Each village in the colony would have its own school. Ellis thought, those kids went to school, just like me. It's where they all learned reading, math, and history. But high in the mountains, many challenges remained. Between the settlers and Indians, friendships were strained. Fighting between them could sometimes be rough, and Ellis understood preserving freedom was tough. On Liberty in Rhode Island, Roger Williams set his sights to make freedom of religion a basic human right. He believed that the government should not have a say about the manner in which people could pray. He met 
Indians in Providence and learned to speak their tongue and soon found they were neighbors he was pleased to live among. The natives called him Nettop or friend upon meeting. Ellis smiled and thought, now that's a good greeting. Here's Ellis. To Delaware, the Swedish came from far across the sea. They built homes called log cabins using wood from sturdy trees. But here in the New World, there was not a clear plan for Delaware ended and Maryland began. So surveyors Mason and Dixon set out to define a border we know today as the Mason-Dixon line. You're doing a good job listening, Jason Wyatt, boys and girls doing super impressed. Here we go. North Carolina was rugged, a hard place to tame, a mysterious lost colony, its first claim to fame. Roanoke sadly vanished when, as some say, hunger and thirst drove the settlers away. All colonies had their troubles, but some had more than most. Pirates roamed and plundered along the North Carolina coast. Ellis learned that one pirate above all others were feared. He was known far and wide as the despicable Blackbeard. Jason, you have your uh, pirate costume still? Your eye patch? I bet you do. But there were many honest men who were working at sea. They shipped goods and supplies like spices and tea. To South Carolina, they brought trade of all sorts and made Charleston home to a bustling port. Here, merchants shipped crops that the settlers grew, mainly rice from plantations and blue indigo, too. Slaves did much of the work without freedom or pay. Ellis knew this cruel practice was not the American way. Doing a great job. Listen, boys and girls, proud of you. Those who needed a second chance came to the colony of Georgia without any shame. Ellis liked the, be, uh, liked the idea of being a part of a place where everyone had a fresh start. The Wesley brothers came to Georgia with a special vision to find the welcome people to their spiritual mission. Their ideas awakened many hearts to live a new way, and Ellis learned the hymns that they wrote are still sung today. The last colony, the very last colony on the tour guide's list was a place they definitely should not be missed. It's called Pennsylvania after its founder, William Penn, and boasted a great patriot whose name was Benjamin. Benjamin Franklin was a founding father of our nation, but his lifelong passion was invention and innovation. In a storm in Philadelphia, he ventured out with the kite and key when the kite was struck by lightning, he discovered electricity. And electricity, boys and girls, is what keeps these lights on, right? I don't know if you know that yet. Okay, that's good for you if you do. That's right, said the guide. Now you know the story of the 13 colonies who proudly waved old glory. Ellis thanked his guide and left Williamsburg for the day. He traveled to Washington to keep learning away. High above the capital, the flag caught Ellis's gaze. And with all 50 stars, he was truly amazed. So many brave people had come to this great land. And Ellis finally understood how America began. Oh, Ellis is cute. And then there's the resources at the end. So boys and girls, land of the pilgrim's pride, Ellis the elephant, you did a great job listening. Moms, dads, aunties, uncles, grandparents, parents, the parents who are taking care of the children. Thank you so much. Grandpa Story Hour is meant to support your efforts in raising beautiful, beautiful citizens of the United States of America. Hope you like it. Hey, if you feel so, we do have a Venmo account. It's in the uh, description. Hope that you would um, drop a dollar or two. It helps me and my wife buy more books and just keep spreading the word. Okay, God bless everybody. Bye, bye.